Okay, these are tips. Okay, now if you mark, if you've got some routes and stuff, it's got a good topo map of the area, and you got like coming in here the route that you're going to use all the time, or coming up and routes that you know your escape routes or that just ones you definitely want to use for from your house to here or wherever at. You can use a, a, a yellow highlighter and in, in your lights if you get the lenses. You can use a, a blue a blue filter and that will glow at night time. So that's a good little tip to use. Um, so and then I'll, there's another one using like a, a clean fuel transfer pump. Works great for filling canteens, your camelbacks, wherever from large containers, like you got your big jugs. You've got those those little hand pumps, the, the pump ones they sell. I mean they make ones for water. They're pretty spendy, but if you get the ones that are made for fuel like the kerosene and that, they're pretty cheap. Because I mean what, three bucks or something for the little the little ones. And they got and then a lot of times once you just, you want to see the prime start, you can fill and then have a bunch of canteens and fill all the canteens up for everyone. Once you start to get the prime and it's, get going, but they but since they're for fuel and if they never been used for fuel, it's no big deal. They're clean. They'll work. It's plastic. Who cares, right? You drink from a plastic canteen anyway, so ain't gonna kill you. Um, basic survival needs such as extra rations, pocket knives, first aid kits, paracord maps and cigarette lighters being kept in a cargo pocket is a smart move. Rationale, if things get tight and the pack is dumped, the weapon and the web gear is lost, the basic survival needs are still on your person. And that's, that's pretty, gear. just yep. right here. Got in these, these pockets are great. You can stuff these things full of stuff. But if you lose lose these, I think you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you're, then you, you're, beyond, you're beyond a lot more issues than that. So if it goes in your pocket, it's great. Foot care and maintenance is very important. Tape sensitive hot spots on the feet or areas where you always break out in blisters. Cut tape or moleskin to these areas prior to going out to prevent blisters from forming. Use a tincture of benazine before taping these feet, taping the feet, and this will keep the, the moleskin on longer as will as toughen the feet. Yep. Use foot powder and massage your feet daily. And another little trick too you can use is uh, cayenne pepper. Another use for cayenne pepper, use just a light dusting in, in the winter time. It'll burn blood to the, the, your feet, circulation. It'll keep your feet warmer. And I say a little bit. I had a buddy that did that when we were in Germany, and he put a lot on his feet, and his feet started sweating, and he started doing the hot, feel like he's on a hot skillet. Because you, because you put a lot, and you start your feet start getting a little warm, and then it really starts burning. It almost got a chemical burn on his foot. Like he, his feet were red from cayenne pepper. I said a little bit, and he thought, you know, like putting foot powder on. No, I mean it's literally just a. I mean, you're just a little dust on there, and it doesn't take much of cayenne pepper to do that. Wool socks. Wool socks. Yeah, it's going to go here. <laughs> Wool <Wolf's laughs> <good. laughs> socks are the best for bo both winter and summer. They absorb sweat. Sweat the best. Pads the feet and don't get clammy when wet. Then, per when, when purchasing wool socks, ensure they're 100% wool and not synthetic. Okay, butane lighter or butane lighters. When carried in the winter, should be placed next to the body to keep them warm. When a butane lighter gets cold, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It does not work well or last as long as a warm one. So keep it in your pocket. And another thing is, zip lighters are awesome. They're cool. You can flick. You do tricks. You do all that. They just don't last. You don't get a whole lot of usage out of them. I mean, they just they burn through the butane. It's gonna last. Those little bits gonna last forever. Comparative. They tend to evaporate out as they say yeah, too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, I mean, they're cool and all. I love them. I've got like 10 million of them. I got some. I even got a Playboy one. It's worth a million dollars now. But they're just not. The route what we need to use. Not a good idea. Extra canteen carried in your pack shows be drank first one out. It will lighten the load of your pack when when carried. And if you have to dump your pack. You will still have one on your belt, so it's pretty proud. So you've got your canteen on your belt or wherever, or, and you got your extra pack. You want to drink, you want to drink, eat whatever you got in there first, and then go down and down and keep working your way down to yourself. When it's hot out, you get a chance to soak come. your canteen cover Busy with come. 
with water. It, your canteen cover with water, evaporation will keep it cool. So if you're down by the river, all that, you can soak it. Just like the old water jugs on top front of the car, you know, they'd soak them with water and that would evaporate and keep it cold. So, always carry a spoon with you. Okay, I'll carry a spoon. Okay, carry a spoon always. You can drill a hole in the handle and wear it around your neck. You can eat. You don't need a fork. You can eat everything there. You carry. You carry a. <laughs> I just like left it down the truck. Oh, I feel naked. Dad. <laughs> no, I, I got my other knife. I just got my one knife. Dad. Okay. Then we're gonna click on some weapon tri weapon ticks. All right, weapon tips. Consider buying or practicing with a BB gun or, or uh, a BB gun or CO2 pellet. They will be cheaper and buy and use than a rifle when you get your when you get when yeah than a rifle where you will need a rifle range to shoot it. As you will need a good sturdy backstop for as you don't you only need a good sturdy backstop for a BB or pellet gun. Just like not much at all. You don't want to shoot the neighbors. You know you basically need a, fence, a little thick fence. We should be fine, but Some plywood. Although BB guns do not, in any way, compared to the real thing, they will help you improve in some areas such as aiming, squeezing, breathing, which are extremely important in marksmanship training. Other thing is the air softs. I'm not. I kind of always laugh at them, but same thing there. You can use them. It's just sometimes it's there's like the was the China, uh, the one guy from China. He won a gold in the Olympics yeah. for the four position shooting. He never got around a 22 until he went to the Olympics. All he did is dry fire shooting, practicing at targets. Literally sat there thousands and thousands of times just dry firing his, his, his bullseye rifle 22, and he won gold at it. So there's something to be said just sometimes just packing something, you know, and just breathing and practicing just repetitive over and over and over again. So then again. Avoid drinking any alcohol, partying or coffee, chocolate or tea beverages the night before and the day of your weapon qualifications or going out, training, FDX or anything else like that. Alcohol and especially caffeine drink changes your heart, heartbeat and blood flow. Avoiding these drinks just before and the day of firing should help you in some avoiding the shakes. Pretty obvious. You don't want to be hungover out there trying to run and gun and all that. That's probably not a good idea. Get a good night's sleep and rest. You can't go wrong with, with this advice. While, you're, while you are waiting for your turn to shoot, practice dry firing, aiming, squeezing, etc. if you can. Only help won't hurt. It says if you can. Some places, we ain't gonna be out there pulling up a rifle and swinging around. And keep it safe, unloaded, and all that. So like I said, it's if you can. Get a thick black marker and paint over your front and rear sights as most weapon sights bluing. If you know what bluing is, it's the, uh, like here you can see, if you look at mine, there's a little shiny on, on my rear sight here. That's your bluing or your coating or whatever you want your, on there. Or warm to give a dull glare in the sunlight. To reduce this, just darken them with a magic marker. If not available, try using match or Zippo or Bic lighter and darken these areas. Do not overdo it and remember to avoid touching these areas of the site or you'll wipe them off. Sometimes you'll get, it'll glare and it'll make it a little harder to see on there. So. And these are just checklists here. They're not, not full, I've been working on them, they're not full complete by any means. And sometimes you can modify them for your own use. So mine, these are the not do all whatever you need, but it's uh, if you're gonna start start with your own stuff, it's good to go. Um, like any kid or anything you want to carry, it's gonna be specific to the situation that you're yeah. in and what it is that you want to accomplish. But these so, are I'm I'm giving these out to you guys as my like my courtesy to you guys. So if you don't like it, you know, don't complain to me, I guess. <laughs> but at the same time, if it helps you out, I'm gl I'll be I'm, I'm happy that I'm going to hand them out to you guys. That way, you got something to start with if you don't have an idea. And you go ahead and go. I'm probably never going to need. I don't know. Well, there's you know on the on the backpack one poop shovel. I'm pretty sure most people need a poop shovel. But you need a shovel for a lot of different things. You know. And when I say a poop shovel, you you can start off with a, you can go down the dollar store and buy a garden shovel, the little trowels. 
or you can get a little more spending and buy the Gerber multi-tool and trenching tool and spend a hundred dollars on that. So it depends on your variable. That's why I said poop shovel. I didn't say buy the, you know, some of these guys put these lists together and they say buy the most expensive thing because they're, you're buying their stuff. I don't do that because I don't have the money. I have kids. I have a wife and other friends. I mean, I know a lot of the, my buddies here. We don't have the money to, to do that type of stuff. I mean, Jeff's got a dang bus. Come on. It's still yellow. But it's awesome, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so what the heck, you know, right. It's, that's a great thing, but, you know, we do what we can do with what we have. You know, we're as slow as we can do, we're doing it. So there's just some things you may not want, you may not need. You may not want deep incentive propellant. You're going to do something else. Like you're going to your natural stuff or, and, uh, oh, let me look on here. I'm just, I mean, stuff I would, um, all the surgical blades, there's water purification tablets you might know, or fish, fish and, fish and snare line. I don't know if somebody might not want those. I think they're good, but you may not want that. So that's up to you. But they're just, they're on there, they're suggestions. So I'm not going to really go over that because I'm thinking I'm dragging out a little bit longer. So if anybody wants to go over that real quick, guys, if you want to look at them real quick and see if there's anything on there. Did you, did you get one of those? Okay, I assume no. So is this like stuff to keep in your vehicle? Or is this like? Well, there's a vehicle kit and there's a backpack and checklist. Okay. So like you put your pack and the other oh, one's sorry, a, like a vehicle that. kit. So if you, you put it in your... Put it in your vehicle. Like put like get like a like I keep a little totes like emergency. I got 22 rounds. I got shotgun shell rounds, you know, and and whatever. I keep some 40s in there because what I, what I keep just a few rounds in a little baggie of everything I have. You never. You always need bullets, right? You can't. Firearm don't work good if you don't have bullets. So that's that's plain and simple. Um, and other, you know, then you got the first aid kits. You got all the other stuff. So all the things on here. So. Try to keep these things, you know, blankets, extra clothes, okay. you know, some underwear, some socks, some shirt, a shirt, other things. I mean, I have my things. I have some of these, the kit, but I have others going along with it. Any bulk it out is, and then it's sometimes it's what you have for room. You know, if you got a small vehicle, you may not want all that stuff in there. You're like, what's, what can I take? What do I think I really need? And you go, well, I don't need this. I don't need this. Do you need a map? Well, I go where there's service. I don't need a map. I got a cell phone, so that that might eliminate something for some people. They don't want a, an actual physical map and compass. That's the yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. But some people are just, yeah. you know, they're never gonna do. They're just, I'm gonna go where I need, where I know I'm gonna be, so I don't want that stuff. So it just depends on a, each each individual individual person. So, other than that, I don't think there's much else. Uh, <coughs> Go over if there's any other questions, though, for me. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, guys. Thank you. And if anyone's got any extra twine because my kids didn't do it, you can shut up. <laughs>